Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Tim McBad, a fashion and beauty photographer and also a filmmaker based in London, UK. So today for the very first time, let's talk about videography. To start off with, I would like to start off with the shutter speed uh, and then I'll move on to the aperture, then I would move to the ISO. So let's start with the shutter speed. For filmmaking, we know the shutter speed is determines the speed at which you tend to like um, um, get your shots or I'm, I'm basically giving you guys in layman time right now the shutter speed is basically talking about how fast you can capture or freeze a moment so but in filmmaking it's a different ball game there's a natural rule which says which is called the 180 degree rules which says for your shutter speed you need to make it two times of your frame rate so what frame rate means is there are different frame rates which is like we have the 24 which is the standard zones are the 24 the 30 the 50 the 60 these are like standard frame rates so the 180 degree rule says you need to double your shutter speed for you to get a uh, sweet or like that's a sweet spot to get a filmic look to your videos so if you are to set your camera to 24 frame per second you need to make sure your shutter speed is two times of your 24 frame per seconds and two times or two times 24 means one over 48 so but because majorly most dslrs or mirrorless cameras we have do not actually go down to one over 48 so the closest is actually one over 50 so that's why we tend to like use one over 50 when doing filmmaking the reason why that is important is because imagine me moving my hand right now you can see the motion blow in my hand but if i am not if i if i decide to increase my or crank my shutter speed up my hand will just keep moving like straight up you won't get any motion blow in my hand or in any motion so that won't make it look filmic or won't make it look cinematic or won't make it look like a normal way it should look so you tend to double your shutter speed so number two talking about aperture aperture is a very interesting thing because you know aperture um, talks about how how much light actually goes into the lens or how less light goes into the lens and aperture varies depending on the lens you are using there are different types of aperture for every lens there are apertures that could be 2.8 f2 f1.8 f1.4 f1.2 different types of aperture it all depends on the lens you are using so um what aperture does is if you have an apertures of about let's say like 1.8 you're going to be able to get more light into the lens so thereby that means your picture will be like way brighter or well exposed compared to like an aperture of like f8 or f4 it's going the closing is going to be like less you get me so it's all dependent on the lens you are using and that's not the only thing aperture does or aperture also affects your depth of field and what i mean by depth of field is more like bouquet which is some people call buka or something yeah so it affects how um i don't know if you would have seen pictures in which you see um someone looking blurry when the person is in front the background looking very blurry that's your aperture that's the work of your aperture if your aperture is in about let's say like f1.2 it's like that wide open you get shallow depth of field but if your aperture is like this small you won't get that much depth of field or much buka in your picture and also guys let's just put this in one corner even though you still have an aperture of f1.8 f1.4 f1.8 distance of your subject to the background also matters but let's just put that in one corner good so that is that for aperture aperture is basically dependent on the scenario you're in if you want more light in the scene increase your aperture where also you have enough opening or you tend to like close it down to reduce the amount of lights coming into your camera this is what aperture is about the higher so basically means the sensitivity of your sensor to light so the iso ranges from about 50 to ISO could go as high as 52 or 51,200 or more or 12,800 dependent on your camera the ISO is dependent on your camera so and what ISO is is if you're having a ISO of 100 your image will be less brighter compared to your ISO of 200 
yeah, it's compared to ISO of 400, compared to ISO. So the more you increase your ISO, the brighter your image is. But it comes with the caveat. The caveat is if you keep increasing your ISO, it gets to a point in which you're going to start introducing greens into your picture, which is noise and greens. And you do not want that as a videographer or as a filmmaker. So you need to be mindful of how well you use your ISO. So guys, these three different things I've mentioned come into play when you're doing your videography or your cinematography and we're going to talk about that in our next video so guys if you've enjoyed this video kindly like comment share and subscribe because yeah this is going to motivate me to keep doing features like this yes guys subscribe bye